President Muhammadu Buhari expected back home after a fruitful visit to the United States of America. Our administration has prioritized basic health care delivery services for Nigerians through the revitalization of primary health care. Let us work together to find solutions to challenges confronting the health sector. A plea by Vice President Yemi Oshibaju to health personnel at a conference in Abuja. And as the world marks Press Freedom Day, Information and Culture Minister challenges journalists on the imperatives of objective reporting. Good evening. Thanks for joining us on NT Network News tonight. I'm Cyril Stoba in Abuja. Hingino John Adams is in Lagos. Chegano Aro joins us from our Enugu Center. And in Maiduguri, we have Mohammed Ibrahim. President Muhammad Buhari is expected back in the country later tonight after a historic visit to the White House in Washington, D.C. The visit was at the invitation of U.S. President Donald Trump, who promised to break trade barriers between Nigeria and the United States. President Trump commended the Nigerian leader on his dogged fight against corruption. While the president is the first one from sub-Saharan Africa to be received by President Donald Trump, at the White House. This, the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, says should be a pride to all Nigerians. Gufan Shaji reports that the minister was speaking on NTA's Good Morning Nigeria and the gains of President Buhari's visit to the United States of America. The minister noted that trade and security were top on the discussions between the two leaders. Other issues, he says, centered on governance and issues of terrorism. I think uh, from all indications, the president's visit to the U.S. has been a rallying success. Uh, there was a matter that came up, which I think is important to mention here, uh, when I was in the U.S., which has to do with the one, the insecurity in the country, and two, in particular, the uh, health men farmers clash. Uh, it's unfortunate and it's important for us to continue to put the record straight that what we have today in terms of headers from mass clash has nothing to do with religion, has nothing to do with ethnicity, that rather is more environmental, more economic. All the guests further gave their assessment of the president's visit, revealing that it is a renewed vigor in Nigeria-U.S. relations and an advanced stage of Nigeria's image on the international scene. That invitation alone is a sign of recognition, is a mark of respect uh, for Africa and particularly Nigeria. Accrued to Nigeria during this visit is the apparent you know, high-profile reception and the recognition of the character you know, and the acceptability uh, of the quality of the Nigerian leader. Where the American president made the promise that he will break some of the trade barrier to make it more balanced in terms of trading with Nigeria, especially on the agri, that impact the agri section here in Nigeria. We are hopeful that uh, the agreement for the uh, takeoff of the uh, national airline carrier uh, would be a reality. We have seen officials during this visit having meetings with Boeing, one of the biggest aircraft manufacturers uh, uh, in the world. They also hope that discussions that were made will be consolidated on and be followed up in Abuja, Gufan Shaji, NTA News. Vice President Yemi Oshimbaju has appealed to healthcare practitioners to show more understanding in their dealings with the federal government and avoid the negative impact of strikes. At a three-day national conference on healthcare delivery in Abuja, the Vice President said government will continue to work towards jointly finding solutions to challenges in the sector. State House correspondent Gide Unifari reports. Health is wet, the saying goes, and it deserves all attention. And that explains the reason for the caliber of people present at this meeting. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo represented the President for my head of state, Yakubu Gawain, Senate President Kola Thank you very much. and many distinguished personalities. The focus is on healthcare delivery, an indicator of good governance. Their presence is an acknowledgement that the sector 
is in recent time receiving attention from the appropriate quarters. Having identified healthcare reform as one of the major drivers of our, of our nation's economy, our administration has prioritized basic healthcare delivery services for Nigerians through the revitalization of primary healthcare and we have retooled the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency for better performance. As noted by the Vice President, the levels of public sector investment in healthcare in recent past has in no way reflected the nation's higher earnings. But paying for healthcare from budgets will not be enough to move the needle in healthcare funding. A robust national health insurance scheme will be required alongside private sector and donor partnership funding. The Vice President says government recognizes the importance of technology in advancing healthcare delivery and has continued supporting innovation in this respect. Many of these, many of these problems are problems that predate many of us in so many ways. Predate your administration, predate our administration. But there are problems that must be solved by sitting around a table and trying to resolve them. Where those problems, where the resolution results in the loss of lives of so many Nigerians, then we must take a second look at how to approach it. On our part, on our part we will continue to listen to you and to discuss solutions that are agreeable to all stakeholders. We've constituted an interministerial committee to examine all previous reports, documents, poly instru policy instruments and laws, including the Yayale Ahmed Committee report. Health deserves all the attention to deal with uh, the many uh, poor uh, indices that impair Nigeria's development. I am very confident that the appropriation bill that will come out in the next few days will have a 1% coverage for the primary health care. The Vice President also unveils the Nigerian Medical Association Strategic Plan 2017 to 2021. From the International Conference Center in Abuja, it's Jide Onifade, NT News. Now the matters now as the world marks the 2018 World Press Freedom Day, the media industry in Nigeria has been advised to remain resolute in protecting the sanctity of press freedom. This was the consensus at an event organized to mark the day at Nile University in Abuja. Ado Adamu Alsu reports. The World Press Freedom Day is observed on the 3rd of May every year with the aim of paying tribute to journalists around the world who have sacrificed their lives in the line of duty. The day focuses on an enabling legal environment for press freedom and gives special attention to the role of an independent press and the prosecution of crimes against journalists. Marking the day in Nigeria, the U.S. Embassy, in collaboration with the Department of Mass Communication of the Nile University of Nigeria, Abuja, brought together journalists and other stakeholders to analyze the situation of journalists in the country. Speakers commended the Nigerian media practitioners for their resilient and consistent reportage of events over the years, while also describing the environment as the freest in Africa. World Press Freedom Day serves as a platform to remind us the essence of preserving strong journalists. We should always strive to be representing uh, as journalists the, the whole of society. So we should be struggling to report the good and the bad. What is the take of journalists on the day? That I'm happy. Nigeria is considered to be the freest in terms of press freedom in Africa. I wish other countries too will have or give opportunities for their journalists to have the freedom uh, of practicing uh, their work as journalists. Keeping power in check, media justice and the role of law is the theme for this year's World Press Freedom Day in Abuja. Adua de Mualso, NTA News. And as the day is marked, the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, has appealed to the media to always ensure fairness, impartiality, truth and accuracy in reporting government activities in line with the principles of responsible journalism. In a statement signed by the Special Advisor to the Minister of Information and Culture, Shegun Adeyemi, the Minister noted that as an important pillar of democracy, the media should not be prejudiced and should hold all arms of government accountable. 
noting that the present administration is committed to press freedom and will continue to ensure journalists unfettered access in carrying out their duties, the minister commended the media for promoting democracy and urged it to operate above political influence in, in the upcoming elections. Expressing concern over how the media has been exploited by mischief makers, especially the social media in bringing divisions, Lai Mohammed says such unpatriotic conduct threatens the unity of the nation. And joining me now is a veteran journalist, Mahmoud Jega, who's here to provide more perspective on World Press Freedom Day. Mahmoud, thanks for being with us today. Thank you very much. Uh, well, the <coughs> theme of this year's celebration, how does it relate to Nigeria? Well, the theme is keeping uh, power in check. And it applies to all societies because uh, journalism is central to the proper functioning of liberal democracies all over the world. If journalism is not functioning properly, honestly, the citizens will lack the main tool that they have to keep power in check because elected people as well as appointed people are entrusted with power at various levels, power over the treasury, over appointments, over all kinds of state matter, and there is a tendency to abuse it. And the media is one of the major organs that citizens have to keep powerful people in check. Even though we have three divisions of government, let's say at the federal level, mm -hmm. and they check and counterbalance each other, but the media checks all three of them. So that's really the, the key importance. Then the society at large, what's the responsibility of the media? To... Well, uh, you see, Ideally, the, the mass media speaks for the downtrodden who are voiceless. Although we hear government officials saying the main responsibility of the media is to keep citizens informed about the activities of government. That is one of the uh, responsibilities, but it is not the main one. The main one really is to check for abuses that powerful people might commit with the power that they are entrusted upon. And by publicizing, by finding out, by publicizing, of course, there are ways in which you do that. But I think that is the most important responsibility, which is why keeping power in check is the theme of this year's International Press Freedom Day. And from the society, what is it that society should take about the journalists in terms of protection? Well, uh, most of the protection should come from the authorities because it is the police the other security agencies and the judiciary that have the main responsibility of safeguarding journalists against attacks uh, from aggrieved elements. And you know people can be aggrieved just because you have told the truth about some wrongdoing that they are doing. But the citizens too, as you have said, if they appreciate the critical importance of journalism to the proper functioning of liberal democracy, then uh, they will have a hand in the protection. Quickly, Jaga, before I let you go, yes. how would you rate press freedom in Nigeria? Score press freedom. Score. How would I? Score press freedom in Nigeria. Uh, it is one of the best in Africa. All right. In Nigeria. It okay. is one of the best in Africa. It could be better, but it is one of the best in Africa. All right. Thank yes. you very much, Mahmoud Thank Jagger, you. for Thank coming you, on. Yeah. Well, still on World Press Freedom Day, the U.S. Embassy in Nigeria has reserved four days to commemorate freedom of press and the bravery of the men and women who risk their lives in the ex exercise of their profession. Chine also attended a movie screening and panel discussion, which marked the first day of the celebration. You go public and 30 million people hear what you gotta say. Nothing, I mean nothing, will ever be the same again. 1999 film, The Insider, an adaptation of the band who knew too much. A true story by journalist Marie Brenner. is a whistleblower film on the ills surrounding seven major tobacco companies and the concealed dangers in their products. He's got something to say, he wants to say it, I want it on 60 Minutes. At the end of the 157 minutes viewing, a panel of three analyzed the role of investigative journalism in uncovering what could adversely impact the society. We have to be problem solvers. In a news organization, if you're the person who comes up with the solutions, you are going to be the star, and that lets you pick your battles. Members of the public who joined journalists and broadcasters at this special day expressed worry and hope for the Nigerian press. So how do you now survive? 
because most media survived by government or because of that. Where do you draw this curtain? The global theme for the World Press Freedom Day 2018 is keeping power in check media, justice, and the rule of law. Individuals and organizations are expected to evaluate press freedom world over, defend the media from attacks, as well as honor professionals who have been maimed or killed in the cause of carrying out their duties. In Abuja, Chineye Ozo. And ahead on the news tonight, Senator Dino Melae remanded in police custody. The details shortly. Are you sure you want to do this? Adam, go and bring us your husband. Okay, hello baby. We're in this together, okay? Can you hear me? Keep coming forward. Wait, 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 stop, stop. <laughs> okay, you okay, you're right. <laughs> Keep walking down. Keep walking to the left. Yes. You're almost here. here. You are here. <laughs> wow, you did it. I'm just so glad I didn't have to use my cane to do this. And I am so glad no other man got you before me. Let me be your eyes. We will never stop working to give you a network you can rely on so you can enjoy life's special moments. MTN, everywhere you go. Standards Organization of Nigeria, SON, brings a new lease of life to Nigeria SMEs. SON has put a greater premium on developing standards to improve made in Nigeria products for export. We have developed more standards for products like Sesame, Coco, Gary, and more, courtesy of our accredited state-of-the-art laboratories. In keeping with the federal government's ease of doing business, SON has simplified its processes and turned around time for SONCAP, MANCAP, and other certification processes. SON has intensified market surveillance, raids, and seizures to reduce substandard products in circulation, and offenders shall be prosecuted. Join SON in reading our nation of substandard products. If you see something, say something. Standards Organization of Nigeria, improving lives through standards. The Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Baba Abubakar, is pleased to inform the general public that the 54th Nigerian Air Force Day Celebration 2018 will take place at the Nigerian Air Force Base, Kaduna, from 3rd to 6th of May 2018. Theme, enhancing Nigerian Air Force operational capability for timely employment of air power in response to contemporary security challenges. Activities lined up, Jumat prayers, interdenominational church service, medical outreach, historical photo gallery display, gala night, ceremonial parade, aerial and static display, commissioning of some helicopters and presentation of colors to the newly established air training and ground training commands. Special guest of honor, the president and commander-in-chief of the armed forces, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Muhammad Buhari GCFR, Nigerian Air Force, willing, able, and ready. Hey, Adam. Hey, Dad. Look, I got something for you. A football chassis. Hey, Adu, come watch a game with your uncle and I. I'm okay, thanks. So, Daddy, you sure those blues pay, pay us to be, right? You sure did. Those three points are sure for us today. The game's about to start. <laughs> Quickly! Brought us as usual. As usual. Mm. Hey, for the three, the three you are welcome, sir. <laughs> as usual, yeah. Welcome. Hey, you take that one. You take that one. You take that one. You take that one. You don't understand. We want Nigeria home grown right. Finish. You don't have. You don't have. Join the rice revolution today. No other rice that tastes like Nigeria rice. Are you sorry? Look you That's the Nigeria rice we're talking about. Chocolate made in Nigeria rice. Healthy food. I'm going to bring Mrs. Mumu to come to chocolate rice made in Nigeria here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And see how it I make. Quarant, quarant. And how they cook it. Quarant. 
Homegrown rice are good for your health. It will boost our economy and I give employment to our people. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. Do you know that the Nigerian police now operates in the best international practices of policing? Do you know that the Nigerian police has been restructured to be more accountable and responsive to all your security challenges? Now, what the police demand from you is your trust, your collaborative efforts by providing necessary information about criminals and their activities in your neighborhood. Be vigilant to achieve our creed as we promise. We shall police the country based on international core values of policing with integrity. We shall ensure that rule of law prevails in our actions and activities. We shall respect diversity, display courage, show compassion, and demonstrate professionalism. We shall operate within the principle of democratic policing. We shall shun corruption and we shall make Nigeria safer and secured under the leadership of IGP Ibrahim Otum Idris. Let the wind of change blowing across the country chase away crime for the benefit of our society. Yes, the Nigerian police says this change must come with peace and tranquility. This message was brought to you by the Public Relations Department of the Nigerian Police Force. Thanks for staying with us. And turning to the legislature now, the Senate has passed nine bills, including the bill for an act to establish the National Child Protection Agency. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Sunko reports that the legislators also considered and approved the report of its conference committee on the amendment of the Public Procurement Act. An oversight on the public procurement unit. The public procurement amendment bill was basically to enhance the efficiency of the Bureau of Public Procurement. But the Senate and the House of Representatives passed different versions of the bill. A conference committee was constituted to resolve the differences. It is the harmonized report of the conference committee that the Senate has approved. The conference committee of both houses have met and harmonized the difference is in accordance with Senate Standing Order 87. I recommend that the Secretary of Government for the Federation shall serve, shall be the Secretary of the Federal Government Tender Board, the Secretary of Procurement Estate and Works shall be the Secretary to the National Assembly Tender Board, and the Chief Registrar of the Supreme Court shall be the Secretary of the Judicial Tender Board, instead of the Clerk of the National Assembly, as earlier recommended. Show sure this bill. Once this has been implemented, it will have a lot of value, both for the area of um, local content and uh, made in Nigeria drive, and also improve the efficiency of the Bureau of Public Procurement. The Senate in the Committee of the Whole, presided by the Deputy Senate President Ike Okwaremadu, passed nine bills for third reading, including a bill for NAC to establish the National Child Protection Agency. The agency is expected to provide protection and care for all Nigerian children. The bill for the establishment of the National Assembly Budget and Research Office, already passed by the House of Representatives, has also been passed by the Senate. The Federal Capital Territory Civil Service Commission bill was among the bills passed. And whatever observations have been noted by um, the legal department and some of the other stakeholders have been taken care of. So that when we are sending down to the president, is bill that's kind of near perfect. The Senate president granted audience to a delegation of South-South, Southeast, Southwest and Middle Bed Forum, led by Chief Edwin Clark, a former minister of the Federal Republic, who urged the National Assembly to reconsider the Constitution Amendment Bill on devolution of powers. We know that the National Assembly has had debate on devolution of powers. And we know, Mr. President, that you did promise the nation that you will have a revisit to this issue. We just want to bring the passage of the budget and then we'll consider the report. The Senate President assured them of the National Assembly's commitment to national unity. From the National Assembly, Ignatius Unquo, NTA News. The House of Representatives has passed the amendment bill on the Coastal and Inland Shipping Cabotage Act of 2003 and two others at Thursday's plenary. National Assembly correspondent Kenneth Nanim has details. 
The two other bills passed are that for an act to repeal the National Inland Waterways Authority and to enact the Nigerian Inland Waterways Authority Bill and that to establish the Chartered Institute of Commodity Brokers of Nigeria. Honorable colleagues, the questions that the bill will be now read the third time. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Those against it say nay. Ayes have it. Bill read the third time and passed. The need to investigate the alleged financial and administrative infractions by the Registrar of Council for the Regulation of Freight Forwarding in Nigeria by Representative O.C. Prestige from Abia State and other investigative motions were adopted and referred to the relevant committees for further legislative action. In a motion of urgent public importance, Representative Blessing Nsiebwe Biba from River State urged the House to investigate the death of a core member, Amade Eva Ichechuku, serving in Kwara State, whose death was allegedly related to the injury she sustained, having participated in a man of war activity at the camp. We note, Mr. Speaker and Honorable Colleagues, the urgent need to improve medical facilities and personnel at orientation camps. There are some training that you can't allow people with, with certain conditions to go through. The kind of training the army gives to these children should be reviewed. If the nation really wants our kids to undertake this compulsory one-year NYSE, they should ensure that there is enough money in uh, the um, Ministry of uh, Youth. In a media briefing, Chairman House Committee on Media and Public Affairs, Abdul Razak Namdas, speaks on plans by the House of Representatives to pass the budget. By the grace of God, we will lay this budget on Tuesday. We've been working hard to see that we beat the deadline. And uh, hopefully, this time around, I can assure you that by next week, Everything about the budget will be concluded and passed. From the National Assembly, Kenneth Nanim, NTN News. Senator Dino Melae was arraigned along with two others on charges of alleged conspiracy in the possession of firearms before a magistrate court in Lokoja. The court refused him bail and has adjourned the case to the 11th of June 2018. Senator Milai is to be remanded in police custody. Correspondent Austin Ayebe reports. Upon arraignment of Senator Dino Milai and two others, Kabiru Saidu and Nuhu Sani, on a late seven count charge, bordering on conspiracy and illegal possession of firearms with intention to carry out unlawful businesses. The prosecution lead counsel, Alice Zion, senior advocate of Nigeria, moved a formal application to strike out the name of the third defendant, Mohamed Audu, which was granted. The seven count charge were read to the accused, after which the prosecution counsel prayed the court to remind Senator Dino Milaye in prison, while the other accused be kept in police custody, as the trial they are standing for does not warrant bail. He, however, said even if the court will grant him bail, the counsel to the defendant Dino Milaye must apply formally in writing. But counsel to Senator Dino Milaye, Mike Ozokome, said his client will not jump bail if granted. As he is prepared to stand trial, he started his ill health and his standing in the society as areas the judge should consider to grant him bail on self-recognition. He added that the alleged offense committed is not the same with murder, hence the judge should use his discretionary power on bail. Having had the oral application, Senior Magistrate Liman Abdullah refused to grant him bail, saying he was not satisfied with oral evidence and consequently ordered their remand under the custody of the Inspector General of Police. We have articulated before the court the reasons why we shouldn't be by law and by facts. And then the court said yes. So well, that's why they made that order. They should be remanded in the police uh, custody. So that's, that's the position now. Um, the, the court order is that um, it should be remanded, but under the custody of the Inspector General of Police, who should ensure good and adequate medical facilities for him. The case comes up on 11th of June 2018 for substantive hearing in Lokoja, Austin and Yebe, NT News. In other news, the peer review mechanism of all ministries, departments and agencies is pivotal 
to the implementation of government's programs and policies. Minister of Science and Technology, Ugunaya Onu, said this at a meeting with the head of the civil service of the Federation, Mrs. Winifred Oyoita in Abuja. Adibala Brooklyn Sunday reports. Of improving uh, service to the, the Federal Ministry of Science Office. and Technology is the sixth establishment to be visited by the peer review team. We want Nigeria to be a great nation. Ogbonaya Onu says the ministry is complementing the vision of government. This ministry is a great one. Uh, you come in here and uh, somehow you learn a lot and uh, do more for our country uh, in order to help. Uh, the president achieved these very noble goals for our great country. Mrs. Oyoita then addressed newsmen after a closed-door meeting with permanent secretaries. And we discuss, find out more about the mandates, the operations of the ministry, uh, what are their challenges. We'll prepare a report for the Federal Executive Council. We'll also help this administration in its uh, zeal to uh, improve more on, um, on service delivery. And we thank God because uh, we have uh, a president that is very, very interested in service delivery, in, in, uh, in a governance that is citizen-centered. Our researches must translate into product and services. That is when it will have impact on the economy of this country. The committee is expected to visit all federal government establishments nationwide before submitting its report. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. And following the early morning fire which destroyed one of the four transformers at the Alagbon Ikui power substation, the managing director of the transmission company of Nigeria, Usman Mohammed, has assured residents that it will not affect power supply. He gave the assurance during an assessment of the damage. Rutmi Uluagwimi has the details. Rutmi Uluagwimi has the details. The early morning inferno, which reportedly started around 5 o'clock in the morning, completely destroyed one out of the four transformers in Alagbon. The substation fire incident, according to the managing director, Husman Mohammed, is the third case recorded in the country this year by the transmission company of Nigeria. The transformer is like a baby. So when you lose a transformer, definitely you will not be happy. That this equipment that caused this problem, which, is, which we are suspecting has caused this problem, is the lighting arrestor on this transformer. So the lighting arrestor gave way and that is how the, the, the transformer was affected. The managing director and his team were conducted around the affected transformer by staff of the substation. You are not looking at only the cost of the transformer, but you are looking at also the inconvenience and the problem it has caused to the people that are connected to the transformer. And uh, you also have to factor in the cost of, uh, of uh, other associated equipment, like the lighting arrest I mentioned, and several other equipment that will make the transformer function. So, and if you add to including the installation of that transformer, that is uh, that 6060 NVA transformer, the cost will be close to about $2 million. He, however, assured consumers in the area that the bond transformer will not affect electricity supply because there are other redundant transformers in the substation to serve them. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed says the federal government will adequately prepare for the upcoming United Nations World Tourism Organization's Commission for Africa to be hosted by Nigeria in June. The minister gave the assurance when he granted audience to the program director for Africa in Abuja. Anthony Fawson reports. Nigeria will between June 4th through to the 6th host African ministers of tourism alongside global stakeholders in the sector. Ahead of this event, a delegation from the United Nations World Tourism Organization's headquarters in Madrid, Spain, led by Lydia Bebekum, the program director for Africa, is visiting Nigeria. Intimating her on the progress made so far and the state of preparedness, the minister said the main organizing committee has been working around the clock to ensure a hit-free meeting. We've been working around the clock to ensure that uh, we are going to give CAF members uh, a, a, a treat they've never seen anywhere before. All preparations are going very well. We will leave no stone unturned to ensure a very successful CAF meeting. 
The UNWTO representative was full of praise for Nigeria, saying Nigeria has a huge potential in the tourism sector. Tourism is a tool for sustainable development in the country. It can bring jobs for the youth and also reduce poverty and could be the new oil for this beautiful country of Nigeria. Since Nigeria returned to the fold, Two years ago, the world body has given Nigeria thumbs up for its desire to grow the sector. In Abuja, Antony Fosun, NTN News. And for a bit on politics now, the All Progressives Congress has inaugurated a Woods and Local Government Congresses Committee ahead of the exercise slated for May the 5th nationwide. The party has challenged members of the committee to observe the rules of APC to lay a solid foundation structure, a, a solid leadership structure in accordance with the will of the people. Salihu Abdullahi reports. Seven non-member committees for 33 states and the FCT have been inaugurated by the National Organizing Secretary, Senator Osita Izunaso, to supervise the conduct of APC World and Local Government Congresses. The World Congresses is an exercise that is expected to elect 27 officers at each world, in addition to 10 people as delegates for local government and state congresses. While the local government congresses is to produce 27 officials as delegates for state congresses, in addition to three delegates for national convention. So your job is the local world and local government, which is the most sensitive, extremely sensitive, because if you don't get it right at the world and local government, there will be nothing for the state congress to rely upon. There was a guideline given to us by the party, adopted and is adopted by the National Working Committee. Very transparent. At the end of the day, we will come out clean, stronger than we are. Chairmen of the committees were handed over documents required for the exercise and are expected to recruit additional manpower among party members for effective service delivery in Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi, NTA News. And it's time now to join Hingino in our Lagos Network Center for top stories from that zone. Hingino. Good evening, Cyril, and a warm welcome to Lagos. Nascon Allied Industries PLC has recorded a profit after tax of 5.34 billion naira for the year ended December 2017. Chairperson Board of Directors, Yemisi Ayeni, who disclosed this at the annual general meeting, also proposed a dividend of 1 naira 50 kobo to the shareholders at an approved amount totaling 3.97 billion naira. Abola de Salami has details. An impressive performance in 2017 with a growth of 36.9% in profit and a 48% robust performance in the company's turnover certainly called for dividend to be declared. Chairperson Yemisi Ayeni thereafter announced the proposal of a dividend of 1 naira 50 kobo per share. The company's managing director, Paul Farrell, informed the shareholders that the turnover increased by 48% and profit after tax appreciated by 121%, while earnings per share grew by 121%, with 9.4 billion naira in cash reserves. Firstly, we were able to push our um, retail selling prices through. Um, we are able to maintain our volumes as well, and we are able to reduce uh, some of our cost factors. I think that was key for the year's results. On the company's resolve to address the challenges of non-availability of tomato pastes and vegetable oil, the board has this to say. This year we're looking to increase the capacity on our salt. We're also looking at our vegetable oil and tomato paste to see how we'll be able to bring it back to life. I think a lot of our work and a lot of our focus indeed will be on the backward integration. The questions in the AGM were addressing how do we ensure our growth and our business going forward is sustainable. For every 50 kobo share held by stakeholders, a final dividend of 150 kobo will be paid to the shareholders. If you look at the annuals per share, it grew from 91 kobo to 2 naira 2 kobo in just a single year. Then the company capped this performance with a dividend payment of 1 naira 50 kobo. 
the board assured shareholders of sustaining their trust and confidence in the years ahead. In Lagos, Abola de Salami, NTA News. Multi-choice Nigeria Limited, owners of DSTV and GoTV, has launched a new package, Connect with Greatness, in an attempt to achieve customer satisfaction at its peak. Olumide Aguntola reports that former Super Eagles skipper Joseph Yobo was among dignitaries at the event held in Lagos. That depicts the mood as Multi Choice Nigeria Limited launched its Connect with Greatness package. The general manager of sales and marketing Multi Choice Nigeria, Martin Mabutu, explained that the launch is part of the company's World Cup offer to its customers. We're also saying that we have six dedicated channels on Supersport that will be opened up for our viewers to watch in high definition. Those that do not have DSTV or GoTV, we are crashing the price. Only 2,200 Naira that you have to pay to get a DSTV decoder, a dish. For customers who could not access their television screens, here is the good news. Just simply go on and download the DSTV Now app, register your smart card number, and you can connect up to five different devices. Similarly, customers whose choice is the GoTV decoders are not left out of the new package. GoTV will be going for 5,900 Naira, which means if you take out the cost of the subscription, which is already embedded, you're actually paying 500 Naira um, for GoTV. We are also given the Nigerian populace, especially the mass market, the opportunity to watch all the 64 World Cup matches live. The World Cup is phenomenal. It's an amazing experience. So if you cannot be there, why not get the DSTV multi-choice and, and watch it on TV? Other offers on the package include master plan from Russia, fan feast, pop-up channel, and live commentaries of events at the 2018 World Cup in Pigeon English. In Lagos, Ulum De Guntola, NT News. You're still on TNT Network News. It's time to take some messages. The news continues in a moment. Do stay with us. I just want a double door fridge. More people are winning kitchen makeovers. Airtime, other great prizes for your kitchen, and more in the Mamador kitchen makeover. Buy a 2.5 or 3.5 liter bottle of Mamador cooking oil and follow the instructions on the label. SMS the word Mamador, followed by the unique pin to 20822. Hearty cheers as you cook and win with Mamador premium cooking oil. All TVs say picture quality, but never mention the most important color. Black. It uncovers the hidden details of nature. Brings out the richness in all colors. And reveals life. With self-lighting pixels, only OLED TVs make perfect black. And perfect black creates perfect color. LG OLED TV. Cadbury Hot Chocolate 3 in 1. A delicious combination of rich cocoa and wholesome goodness of milk. Just add hot water to get an instant chocolatey treat. Cadbury Hot Chocolate 3 in 1. Just add hot water. refrigerators, airtime, other great prizes for your kitchen, and more in the Mamador Kitchen Makeover. Buy a 2.5 or 3.5 liter bottle of Mamador cooking oil and follow the instructions on the label. SMS the word Mamador, followed by the unique pin to 20822 and follow the instructions. Visit mamador.com.ng for more details. Hearty cheers as you cook and win with Mamador Premium Cooking Oil. Back in Abuja here, Nigeria swaps currency worth 2.5 billion naira with China, making it the third African country to do so. Let's join Muplang Dakok for this and more on business news. Thanks for joining us on this segment. 
The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has signed a $2.5 billion bilateral currency swap with the People's Bank of China. A statement released Thursday by the CBN spokesman Isaac Okorafo confirms that the swap, negotiated in two years, was signed by the governor of the CBN, Godwin Emefile, and his Chinese counterpart, Dr. Yi Gang. The transaction, which is valued at $2.5 billion, is aimed at providing adequate local currency liquidity to Nigerian and Chinese industrialists and other businesses. It will reduce the difficulties encountered in the search for third currencies, thereby improve the speed, convenience, and volume of transactions between the two countries. Following President Muhammadu Buhari's successful visit to the White House, experts have been speaking on its implication on the economy. That will you know, build momentum for Nigeria to accomplish more on non-oil export. So, but there are other areas to exploit on, um, on agricultural exports, on building capacity for us to meet the requirements. Those requirements are not set by America, they are set by WTO. So we have to build uh, trade capacity, export trade capacity. We have to build quality standards and quality infrastructure. To Transactions on the equity sector of the Nigerian Stock Exchange closed on a downward note Thursday. 320 million shares were traded in 4,482 deals, causing market capitalization to dip to 14.8 trillion naira. Unity Bank topped the gainers chart to close at 1 Naira, 15 Kobo. It was followed by Cement Company of Northern Nigeria and Jai's Bank. On the other hand, international breweries emerged the day's highest price loser. Top trades measured by volume were recorded by UBA, Access Bank, and E-Transact. That's the package. Thank you for watching. I am Muplang Dakok. <music>
Works is currently at 46% level of completion. When completed, the 1.59-kilometer bridge, which will link Obanam Junction in Asaba Delta State to Atane in Obaru local government area of Anambra State, will reduce pressure on the existing Niger Bridge, as well as ensure unfettered movement in the area. With the first three phases of early works completed, Mr. Alumona said works on the fourth phase will witness no interruption till its completion in July when a new contract on the main work will be awarded. A tour of the construction sites reveals that large portions of the roads and embankments have been sandfilled while piling is ongoing. Early works for, as I'm talking to you now, has been 46%. And by July this year, we have been through with the content of early was for. The Director General, Voice of Nigeria, in company of some APC faithful, expressed satisfaction with the level of work done so far. When we came to Anichan in January 2015 for the campaign, he made a promise that he's going to take off the second Niger Bridge, and we're happy that it has taken off. Expectations are that the project will be completed in record time in line with the enhanced development strategy of President Buhari. In Onicha, Ekene Ndulwe, NTA News. That's it from Enugu. But for an update on the Mubi bomb blast in northeast Nigeria, over now to Mohammed in Amedugri Network Center. Mohammed. Thank you, Tio Gonu, and welcome to Medugri. More than 30 people have died and many others sustained various degrees of injuries as a result of suicide bomb attack that occurred in Mubi main market of Adamawa State. Ladibala, who visited the scene of the incident, reports that government and relevant operatives are making frantic efforts to forestall the occurrence of the incidents. Just when the people of Mubi are beginning to settle and resume their economic activities from the horrible experience of insurgents, then the unexpected stroke taking them aback, leaving many dead and others injured. Information gathered by NTA News shows that 28 corpses were brought to the Mubi General Hospital aside those that were evacuated and buried by their relations. The principal medical officer, Mubi Specialist Hospital, Dr. Ezra Mekailu Sakawa, said their condition is stable. Reassuring are the words of the Adamawa State Government and the Police Commissioner Adamawa Command, who were at Mubi to see for themselves the incident. So far, uh, the people here in the hospital are, are receiving treatment, and you know the government is going to take care of everything concerning the uh, treatment and so on and so forth. Members of the National Assembly representing the Northern Zone were at hand to commiserate with the bereaved and the injured. In Ola, Ladibala, NTA News. Federal Commissioner, Nas National Commission for Refugees, IDPs, and Stateless Persons, Sadia Umar Farouk, says the federal government is determined to restore basic amenities as well as livelihood of IDPs that have been resettled in their original places of abode. The federal commissioner stated this while flagging of distribution of care, maintenance, and empowerment materials worth millions of naira at Goza local government in Borno State. Abokad Mohamed Musa reports. Speaking before distributing the care, maintenance, and empowerment materials, Federal Commissioner, National Commission for Refugees, Migrants, and IDP, Sadia Umar Farouk, told the people of Goza that she was directed by President Muhammad Buhari to extend the gesture as part of effort to ensure the provision of durable solution to communities that were heated or displaced due to activities of Boko Haram insurgents. The message from Mr. President is the message of hope. And the President is with them, and uh, he, he, he's, he's concerned about their situation and He's doing everything possible to see that the security situation in, in Borno State and the country at large is, is stable. National Commission of Refugees, this is not the first time they have been intervening. They have done marvelously well, especially in human content development. Member representing Southern Borno at the National Assembly, Mohammed Ali Ndume, lauded the federal government for making significant impact in Borno, especially on issues bordering on IDPs. On behalf of the beneficiaries, Kataka Chairman Goza Abdullah Anjato say President Muhammad Buhari deserves a pat on the back and prayed for his success at the 2019 general elections. From Goza in Borno State, Abubakar Muhammad Musa, NTA News. 
That's all for our contribution. It's back to Cyril in Abuja. Thank you, Mohammed. Just a quick break. Stay with us. Experience, they say, is the best teacher. They hold us from the sea. They got that we came back home. They should not go. That is because it's not. No, it's not good. It's, it's a very bad place. So they, they just may have us. Even now, sir, so they are shooting the boat. They are going to use to go Italy. May they stop it. Our country is good. Our country is a blessed country. Now, now I know, say, I know our country is a blessed country. I didn't mean I know before I for not travel from Nigeria to Libya. I know how much I spent. Let these personal experiences serve as a lesson to all who would repeat their mistakes. A word is enough for the wise. This is a public service announcement brought to you by NTA. Tamara Biwena brings us up to date in sports. The National Athletic Development Fund is taking steps towards returning the nation to its rightful place in the sports to ensure that athletes mount the podium at international competitions. Ayodeji Ogunshaki reports that the body which launched its National Athletic Development Center in Akure, Ondo State, is looking to generate funds to prepare athletes ahead of future Olympics. In this scheme, we ensure that a considerable chunk of our unemployed youth will be taken off the streets. The import is for us to be able to bring one million children and youths into sports in the next two years in Nigeria. That kind of gingered us and gave us more courage to go out there and fulfill the wish and the desires of, of our hearts. Week four fixtures of the Nigeria Women Football League were decided midweek across the nation, with Ibom Angels defeating Shaw Babes of Ilori 2 0 in Uyo in one of the fixtures. John Paul Alumona, who monitored the game, reports that winger MM Essien scored twice on third and 68 minutes to ensure that the home team secured maximum points. In other fixtures, FC Robo Queens played a one all draw with Oshun Babes, same scoreline with Heartland and Bayasa Queens. Liverpool will face Real Madrid in the UEFA Champions League final match come May 26 in Kiev, Ukraine. The Jurgen Klopp's men reached their first final since 2007 after a 7-6 aggregate defeat of Roma, who won the second leg semi-final 4-2 in Rome midweek. Liverpool and Real Madrid thus meet in a repeat of the 1981 European Cup final. With sports update, Tamara Ibiwe, NTA News. Now for a quick check on the weather prospects. And that concludes Network News tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Cyril Stover. Good night.